Hi, I'm Carol Andrews for another episode of Southwest TV News. Here are some of the stories coming up on today's show. Spring is here and so is the potential for increased spring runoff across the province. The city of Swift Current is working closely with the Saskatchewan Water Security Agency as increased outflows from the Duncairn Dam will occur in the coming days. Over the past several weeks, an unusual case has developed at the long-term wing of the Herbert and District Integrated Healthcare Facility. A den of garter snakes has been discovered in the crawl space of the building, much to the surprise of staff and residents, with even the odd snake discovered in a resident's room. According to the most recent data from the Saskatchewan Water Secure Agency, above normal runoff is expected in most areas of the province. Thanks for joining us here today. The City of Swift Current is keeping a close eye on the creek levels this spring, as higher than normal runoff levels are expected. Spring is here and so is the potential for increased spring runoff across the province. The City of Swift Current is working closely with the Saskatchewan Water Security Agency, as increased outflows from the Duncairn Dam will occur in the coming days, up to 100 cubic feet per second, clearing the snow and ice from the Swift Current Creek Channel. At this point in time, the situation along the creek line in Swift Current is calm. However, Fire Chief Dennis Pilon says the city is busy working behind the scenes. Right now at this point, we're just making sure that we have sufficient sandbags uh, should something happen. We're making sure that uh, we have uh, our plans and identified the areas that we have to uh, be concerned about. And then we're watching the situation uh, and hoping for the best with the weather. Pilon goes on to add that the city learned a lot from 2011 when rising creek levels brought out volunteers and other crews working side by side along the creek banks. And everyone is prepared to do so again if necessary, with a few key items already in place. The water bladders we, we have and uh, we're ready to put them into place. They can go up very quickly. Um, we, the HESCO barriers that were used along the, the roadways and so on, uh, those belong to the province. Um, we learned a lot on how to use them and we can actually put them up a lot faster than we did last time. And the province has given us information about them. However, we don't have them here. They're being uh, stockpiled in Moose Jaw because that's where they expect the big problem. However, if we have an issue, they will get them down to us in a hurry. Homeowners are also advised to do their part by shoveling snow away from their homes to prevent basement flooding. Inspect the downspout from eaves troughs to ensure water is running away from the foundation and make sure that some pumps are working properly. Residents are also advised to be aware of just how fragile the creek is this time of the year. The higher flow in the creek is weakening the ice and we want to make sure that people stay away from the ice, uh, stay away from the creek. Um, children, keep them away from that creek. It could be dangerous. It may look like there's just a nice bed of snow on it, nice and smooth and s solid, and it's not. So don't go out there, stay away from it. The City of Swift Current will continue to monitor the spring runoff levels in the coming days, hoping for a gradual thaw with mild days and cool evenings. Local residents will be kept up to date on any changes as they occur. Hey mom, Chris has a fever, but I can't remember the number for Healthline. They just changed it. The Healthline number is now 811. <laughs> That's easy. Thanks mom. Healthline 811. Professional health advice 24-7. Trust the team at Pinnacle Financial to help you reach your financial goals. Whether you require personal or corporate income tax planning, bookkeeping, management consulting, or full service mortgage brokering, our expert team has you covered. Contact us today to begin your climb to the top. The Cypress Health Region is dealing with a group of unwanted visitors at a long-term health care center in Herbert. We have more in this report. Over the past several weeks, an unusual case has developed at the long-term wing of the Herbert and District Integrated Healthcare Facility. A den of garter snakes has been discovered in the crawl space of the building, much to the surprise of staff and residents, with even the odd snake discovered in a resident's room. An issue which the Cypress Health Region is actively working to resolve. We have been working with um, some provincial resources to help us, uh, I think, identify really the extent of the problem and what some of our opportunities might be. We are also working with uh, a pest control 
company right now and uh, they're working with us to actually manage the the snakes in the crawl space so since that time we actually haven't had any more coming up into our uh, living areas of our care home so um, you know really what we know is that this is uh, not a new problem that there have likely been snakes you know in this crawl space for many many years. Vashon further adds that family members of the long-term care residents were immediately notified by letter of the snake situation and that the problem was being addressed. The advice that we've received is that there's really not a lot we can do other than potentially manage uh, the snakes that are, are there and uh, we've been using things like glue pads and you know catching the ones that are actually on the move before they go upstairs and uh, we'll have to look at some more p permanent solutions in the uh, in the spring once they you know they're out and and living out out of doors for the summer and there have been some suggestions like potentially you know trenching around the entire building and filling with gravel and so there's some different suggestions we're looking at options what are the costs of those you know really are they proven in effective ways that we might be able to prevent them from coming back into the building in the fall uh, what we know is that this is not a health risk to anybody, uh, but for people who might be frightened of snakes, it's, it's a scary prospect that they might, you know, come across a snake in the facility. But they're garter snakes, they're harmless, they don't pose health risks, they don't, you know, spread infection or disease. And according to information from the pest control firm working with the Cypress Health Region, the garter snakes are expected to remain in the building until at least June. Until then, the long-term care residents and staff of the facility We'll have some undesired roommates in the building. As Saskatchewan residents prepare for the annual spring runoff, the province has now invested more funding for water control efforts. According to the most recent data from the Saskatchewan Water Secure Agency, above normal runoff is expected in most areas of the province. And as many communities prepare for the spring thaw, the province of Saskatchewan has stepped forward with additional water control funding to the tune of $500,000. With a 60% increase in grant funding, rural municipalities and conservation authorities can now access more than $1.2 million in grant funding for the coming year. Funding which arose through ongoing discussions with key groups across the province. Well, it was in was within the uh, water security agency budget, so it's something that, that we had budgeted for. And because of the uptake in the past and, and uh, you know, our discussions with SARM and, and municipalities across the province, they said that this was a really good program and they wished very much that it would be uh, um, um, topped up, and that's what we did. So it helps maintain drainage channels and, and flood protection works in, in municipalities and uh, and SARM is helping us get the word out to all municipalities in the province to take advantage of this program. In 2012, the Water Control Assistance Program helped over 110 rural municipalities and nine conservation and development area authorities. Southwest TV News will continue to report on the spring runoff situation in the coming weeks. The Swift Current Broncos have had a strong presence on the ice through the regular season and right through the playoffs. And in this report, we take a closer look at how the team has gelled on the ice. It's hockey playoff time in Swift Current, as the Broncos continued their first round matchup against the Calgary Hitmen. The Broncos returned home down 2-0 in the series, having lost the first two games on the road. Momentum plays a large factor in the game of hockey, especially in the playoffs and head coach Mark Lamb explains different ways that momentum can shift during a game. Playoffs are, are all about momentum. We need, a, we need a change shot. However it is, maybe it's a, you know, a big save, a, a block shot, a, a very timely goal, a big hit. There's a, there's a lot of different areas in a game and there's a lot of individual plays that can change a, the, the momentum of a series and that's what we need to do right now. One of the Bronco players that is doing his part in creating momentum is forward Chance Lund. Lund created some big collisions on home ice, punishing any Calgary player near him that had possession of the puck. Captain Adam Lowry took notice of the swing and energy that these hits created and explains how Lund has factored into the series. He did a great job of that tonight. Uh, you know, he, 
he's one of our biggest guys and I think you know he used his speed he was in on the forecheck and he had some great plays where he controlled the puck down low while other guys were changing and then you know being able to use his size on some of those big hits you know I think he had a three or four really big hits that you know got the crowd going and you know really got our bench going and that, that really helps with the momentum. The momentum that was created on home ice certainly factored into the team's thrilling 3-2 win in overtime in Game 3. As Colby Cave scored a second goal of the game on a backhander that seemed to surprise Calgary's goaltender. The Broncos still find themselves down in the series, failing to capitalize on overtime chances in Games 1 and 4. Lowry comments on how the Broncos need to generate more offense against Calgary's big defenders in order to come out on the winning end. Their D are really big and it's definitely hard to create offense, yeah, you know, they box you out of front of the net and, you know, we, we talked about before the game, we have to get some more traffic. Uh, Dreger's going to stop a lot of the pucks he sees and, you know, if we can get some bodies in front and get some point shots through and, you know, if we can work the cycle, you know, their D are big but they're not the most fleet of foot and, you know, if we can work the cycle, use our size against their size down low and kind of create the high to the low plays, uh, you know, I think that's how we have to create offense. Regardless of the first round matchup outcome, the Broncos have shown great heart this season, accomplishing their goal of generating a playoff berth and hosting postseason games in front of their hometown fans. For Southwest TV News, I'm Scott Armstrong. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across Southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at mylocaltv.ca. And be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.